we're going to be talking about virtual EEPROMs and the STM32. EEPROMs are essentially external devices that hold a few K persistent data. Now, the STM32 already has persistent data in the form of its flash. Now, this flash is primarily used for storing your program. So, what will happen is you will, when you flash a chip, you're literally putting your program into the first parts of the flash. Now, usually there should be plenty of extra storage near the end of the flash. So what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a struct and storing that in these later pages of the flash. Now, just a few words of warning is this technique was only really useful for small bits of data that doesn't need to be written often. Flash data takes a long time to write and it doesn't have that many write cycles relative to most other forms of persistent data. It's in the, f it's in the form of thousands instead of like hundreds of thousands. So I'm going to show you the quickest and easiest way to start using the flash as a virtual EEPROM. There's a nice little library that boils it down to the quintessentials. It basically has a write, read, um, and that's all it really needs. There's no error handling or there's no safety or backups on like a full implemented version. So you can either download this one or if you're using an STM L4 chip, you can use my branch there. I had, I pushed a little fix for the flash writing command. So once you download that, you're just going to grab it into your project. So I just have a basic project here and I have the folder right here open. And I've got the library here. So it's just called EE. I'm just drag that over. I'll close that and this. And now what we have to do is we have to add this. We have to tell our program how to actually use this. So if you go to properties, all right, general, where is it? Yeah, path and symbols. Add the include. Uh, we want it to be relative to this project, so we can just call EE. Hit apply and close, and it should pop up when we build. Yeah, so now that we see it, then we can go back to properties and we can add source location at folder.ee. All right, now we have, now it's compiling and uh, we have the includes for it. All right, so now what do we want? We want to include the ee.h and include the econfig.h. So the first thing we're going to look at is what we have to work with in terms of configuration. Basically, there's only real two properties you can actually care about. First is what page you're actually working with. So what we can do here is right here, I have, you know, almost all my flash free. So almost anywhere on this flash chip is a viable option. But to see where your page is exactly, you're going to have to go to your, your data sheet to see what size the actual flash memory is. So I'm just pulling up my data sheet. I'm working on an STM L4. There's a flash section. So this one has two banks, 512 kilobytes per bank, and the page size is 2K. So since I'm theoretically, I'm only using 4.83, and since my page size is two kilobytes, I could theoretically do this on the fourth. Um, but we're going to st stick with 50 being a fine, you know, that's, you know, a hundred K in basically. 
Um, all right. Now the next question is the RAM bytes. This library uses an internal buffer and what you do is you write to that internal buffer and then you tell the program to commit that to flash. So just make this the size you're expected to use and you should be golden. And this last one is only specific to certain chips that have um, voltage. Uh, you have to set voltage when you're writing, I think. But most most SDM chips don't have this uh, need. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add usually the kind of first steps when I'm ever making a global object is, you know, I just make a little struct, you know, put some data in there. Uh, this would actually, we'll put this up. We'll put this up top like it's like an actual global object. And then what we'll do is we'll just, you know, mem set this. So then we can fill it in with a bunch of data. All right. So now we've put a bunch of data in it. And now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write to that RAM buffer that I was talking about. So what we're telling to do is on the zeroth index of our virtual buffer, we're gonna write all the data in this global object we want to save. So we're telling to take our global object here and write it into this RAM buffer. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna commit that to the flash. And what we're going to do is we can take this to make sure that we're like actually writing this. We're going to memsep this, our global data to zero, and then we'll try to read it back. Zero. All right. Cool. And basically at this point, it should be all good. Let's put some breakpoints here. Hit debug. Actually, we'll put the breakpoint here. All right. Okay, so we'll put the global object uh, so we can see it. All right. Okay, so now when I step over, all 125s, perfect. Now we're gonna set it back to zero, and then when I read over this, back to 125. So as you can see, verify that it actually wrote to the flash is, once I set these to zero, and I read it back from the location that we originally started it, so zero here, zero here everything worked out perfect now now if you think having this global struct and having this background ram buffer is too much what you can do is you can actually remove this ram buffer and we can call these directly versus these kind of like wrapper functions so what we're gonna need to do is get rid of these two commands and instead of writing to a RAM buffer, we're gonna write to the flash itself. Uh, well, I guess it's write to a RAM buffer and then commit it to the, to the flash. We're just gonna write directly to the flash. Should call this EE. And then data. Okay. Now, before you can actually ever write to a flash, the first thing you have to do before that is format it. If you don't format the specific page you're on, then the flash will not work. And 
the page that's going to flash is the page here, not the zero here. This is to do with the RAM data, and we're not using the RAM data, so it doesn't matter. Okay, and now what we'll do is we'll change this value so we know it's not, we're not just reading what we already wrote to the flash. And we'll hit run. All right, so we go to the expression. We wrote all this, we <laughs> mem set all these back to zero. So when we read this back, it should be all hundreds again. Perfect. Okay, stop this. Now, if that is too much for you, or if this is not more it's not official enough for you you there is a way a more stm supported way of doing this so they have what's called this cube eprom emulator by stm themselves which is a pretty cool software kit it doesn't work with it's not supported on all of them but a healthy load of the most popular STM chips. Now, I didn't go down this path because I just didn't need the level of redundancy that this uh, library supports. In this library, it supports having multiple pages that are can be possibly written to from both banks and have what the ability to switch to different pages based on the wear level of the device. So this level of functionality was more complicated than I wanted to look into. So I opted just for a very streamlined write read um, that didn't require much effort on my part. But in the descriptions, I'll have links to where you can find this page and a PDF that describes in depth um, how to use the library. If, if you do go in this route, just one note is unlike most things with STM where you can add um, configuration software packages, you will not find in the STM ID, you will not find Xcube EPROM software as an option. You have to add that into your project externally, kind of like what we did right here. And should be good.